Hey everyone, it's Seem here from the channel Handsome Smiles. Welcome to another video. Today I'll be doing a review of a classic from 1978. This is Azaro Borom. This is classified as a aromatic fougere, and there were two perfumes or two noses behind this scent, which were Gerard Anthony and Richard Wirtz. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. So Richard Wirtz, he was the from looking at Fragrantica, the only perfume or fragrance he ever created was this one. Gerard Anthony, the other perfumer of this, was on the other hand behind a number of different fragrances, but notably two were Excess by Paco Rabanne and Balenciaga Borom. So that was a little bit of a, a brief background regarding Azara Borom. Let's run through the note list and then I'll break down the scent of how it smelt on my skin and talk about longevity projection and where I feel this works best in terms of seasonality and occasions. So let's look at the note breakdown. Um, at the top of Zara Puram, we're gonna get lavender, lemon, caraway, basil, bergamot, clary sage, iris, and star anise. Uh, the heart of the fragrance is vetiver, sandalwood, patchouli, cedar, juniper berries, and cardamom. The base of the fragrance is oak moss, leather, amber, musk, and tonka bean. So those were the notes, but what do I really get on my skin? Uh, I've got the dry down here on my right hand um, while I was just uh, finalizing my review. This was my scent of the day for today as well. And I'm just going to do a fresh spray here on my uh, left hand to remind me of the opening. So Azara Puram opens up with a beautiful brightness and along with that brightness, I get this clean, fresh, and warm spiciness. The main note in the opening is the star anise, and the star anise gives this a very unique sort of vibe. It's warm, spicy, but has like a, a licorice sort of sweetness behind it. And along with this, I get this beautiful brightness coming from the note of the lemon. The lemon isn't like a, a normal citrus note. It, it get, adds a lot of a brightness to this scent. The opening is so invigorating and bright and quite refreshing and it as soon as you spray it on it gives me a, a gentlemanly barbershop sort of smell and the reason for that is I'm quite lucky in the area that I live in uh, here in the Midlands in the UK there's a sizable Kurdish population and they have opened up a number of Kurdish barbershops which are frequent once every couple of weeks and I usually get a, a haircut, I get a skin fade, and I usually get my beard lined up and shaped up. And they use a cutthroat razor to just line up my beard and just clean it up. And after my haircut and the shave, they apply a cologne or an aftershave on my uh, the places where they shave, so around my neck and my head. And the aftershave or cologne smells very, very similar to Azara Boram. The only difference being that uh, this one lasts a little bit longer on my skin, whereas their aftershave and cologne only really lasts about an hour. But it's the similar vibe to Azara Boram. It's this beautiful, fresh, warm spiciness with a lot of that like, citrusy brightness. It's very invigorating and very bright. As the scent develops uh, from the opening and the opening eases on, on, on my skin, and the fragrance develops into the heart, I pick up the note of the lavender. The lavender note in this gives off this really beautiful uh, and gorgeous, gentlemanly sort of vibe. Lavender, it, in a lot of fragrances, comes across quite uh, harsh and quite soapy. Both of those I don't get in Azara Borom. I don't get a soapy or a harsh quality at all. The lavender is just uh, this very beautiful, and very high quality, luxurious sort of gentlemanly sort of floral scent that lavender gives off. Along with that lavender note, I still get the bright, warm spiciness uh, that you pick up in the opening, which has a subtle licorice sort of sweetness that still remains, but it's like a, the backbone of the scent and the lavender really pushes out on my skin. As the scent develops uh, into the dry down, I also uh, get on my skin a touch of powderiness uh, and a little bit of woodiness as well. I believe the powderiness may be coming from the note of either the iris 
or the sandalwood and possibly even the tonka bean and there's some uh, woodiness in the dry down as well um, which increases as the scent develops into the dry down i believe the dry down the woodiness might be coming from the note of maybe a cedar uh, even though you get some woodiness and some powderiness the the heart what you get in the heart the lavender with the backbone of the warm fresh uh, spiciness from the opening and a touch of the sort of licorice sweetness is the main part of this scent. The lavender is really the main player of Azara Puram. For me, Azara Puram was a fragrance which I uh, avoided for many, many years. Uh, no, most notably because people would say this was quite outdated, quite old school. Um, but when I first did my first impressions, the video was on my channel about two years ago. And since then, I've been wearing this. And I have to disagree. This is not an old, outdated or a typical old school sort of fragrance. I feel like this can work in a modern setting where I, I can see myself wearing this without any problem. I don't think anyone would smell me and say, oh, you smell like an old man. Maybe the vintage juice had a outdated or a uh, really harsh 80s sort of quality. Maybe the vintage juice had an increase of leather or oak moss. Both notes which I didn't particularly get too much in this variation. So maybe because of those two notes being a little bit more tame in the current uh, formulation might be the reason why I didn't feel this was outdated or very old school masculine. Um, in terms of uh, my wife, my wife absolutely adores this scent on me. She just says oh, I smell very fresh and clean. Um, that's another thing regarding the lavender in this scent. It gives off a very clean, gentlemanly sort of vibe. And because of that, I don't see how, how this could not work in a, a modern setting, in my opinion. Um, like many people uh, from reading on Fagrantica base notes, and maybe even people on YouTube, they mentioned that the current formulation is a pale comparison to the vintage. I've never smelt the vintage myself. Maybe they are all right. Maybe the vintage was impeccable juice, but there's no reason why you should not seek out to either sample this or get this in your collection. This is an ex extremely affordable fragrance. I think 100 ml is only around 30 pound. Uh, so you can't really go wrong for the quality of juice and the heritage and prestige you get in. This was a classic from the 70s and I think any collector or enthusiast of any fragrance or perfumery should get their nose on this to understand how this smells. It's a classic barbershop sort of smell. Um, again, with vintage fragrances, many people say, oh, reformulations, reformulations. Uh, the new bottles are pale comparisons to the past. Just avoid them. Um, I hear that a lot of other fragrances as well, like Antaeus, Chorus, but I feel like this fragrance has changed my mind and I'm going to seek out a new formulation of Chorus and see how it is. I've tried the Vintage. The Vintage of Chorus is one of the most beautiful, amazing fragrances. It's better than some of the indie uh, perfumery or niche perfumery I've tried that cost about five to six times the price. Uh, I'm not saying this smells five to six times its price, but this has just showed me that current formulations aren't always doom and gloom like some people like to say on Fragrantica or Base Notes. So that was my sort of take on Azara Puram. This is a beautiful, gentlemanly uh, fragrance. The lavender gives off this beautiful, clean, uh, sophisticated sort of smell. But in the background, you get this fresh, figurating uh spice warm spice which has a licorice sort of sweetness uh, there's some touch of powderiness possibly coming from the iris and sandalwood and there's just a touch of woodiness possibly coming from a note of cedar in terms of performance this lasts on my skin around six to eight hours i'll say on average it lasts around six to seven hours on my skin though i have noticed sometimes it pushes to the eight hour mark the projection for the first three to four hours, this is excellent. It's super, super strong, very, very noticeable. Uh, I believe it's mainly due to the fresh brightness that you get in the opening. Once that settles on your skin, after the four hour marks, this sits a little bit more close to the skin, a bit more on the moderate range for the four to five hour mark. After the six to seven, eight hour mark, this becomes 
very much a skin scent. In terms of seasons, I think this is best worn as a daytime scent in the spring. I think this is where it would shine the best. I could also see it being worn in the autumn or the fall. Um, like I said, more, more, I see this more as a daytime scent rather than a nighttime scent. I think the fresh, invigorating, sort of bright, citrusy opening, um, lemony sort of opening that you get, I think that's best suited to the daytime. I think in terms of occasions, um, I feel like this is a brilliant signature fragrance for a modern man, uh, a gentleman. So it could work as a signature scent during the spring or the fall. Uh, there's no doubt this could work really well in a work setting, in a professional uh, setting. So I could wear this easily to the office. I think I would smell clean and fresh and have this invigorating sort of brightness to it. Um, I can see it be being worn as a casual scent as well. I think overall rating for me as Auroporum is a classic. If you're into or are looking to get into barbershop fragrances, this is a must uh, purchase. Uh, if you're a fragrance enthusiast, I think you do need to sample this uh, just to understand perfumery from the late 70s. I think this is a total classic and I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do leave me a like and a comment below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do. Um, if you have experiences of this fragrance, please let me know in the comments below. I loved reading your comments. Until next time, my friends, see you later.